Now that we've completed the tool paths for this side, which we called Operation 1, we're ready to move on to the tool paths for this side, which we'll call Operation 2. But before we begin, if you look at the part and the symmetry of the part, the opposite side here, which would be Operation 4, is identical. So instead of doing two separate operations, we're just going to do the tool paths for this side and call it Operation 2 and Operation 4. So we could start from the beginning, but to save a little time, I'm just going to actually duplicate Operation 1. This is just a little shortcut that I like to use. So I'm going to right click and go to Duplicate. And it just basically copies Operation 2 again. First thing I want to do is rename this, and I'm just going to call it Op2 and Op4 because of the symmetry of the opposite side. Then I'm going to um, double click on that operation and set up the origin because the origin is different. And so orienting the part like this, just so I can see it a little better, um, this part, this point here will be the origin for operation two. So going into here and going to the origin settings or the work coordinate system settings, Basically, I need to set the z-axis, so I'm highlighting that. The, f the vector perpendicular to this face will be the z-axis, so I'm going to click here. And I do need to choose the model box point of where the origin is at, which is here. And if we look, everything is set correctly. If it wasn't, we could reorient the x-axis um, as needed. But right now, we have the x-axis in this direction the y-axis in this direction, and the z-axis, which is perpendicular to the face. So now that my stock and the work coordinate system are set up, just because I copied it, I can just hit OK. And then I need to just change the tool paths. So we have the drilling here that we had before in Operation 1. I'm just going to double click here and go to the actual geometry and cancel all the old holes. And then I'm just going to select one of the holes. The reason why all of the others are selected is because I asked it to select the other holes of the same diameter. Something looks a little weird. It looks like it's going all the way through. Let's just confirm the depth is OK. It says that the bottom height, we're basically using the origin, which is this surface. And we're going an eighth inch below that, plus another 50 thousandths. Well, that looks correct here, but something is wrong in the visual system. Let's just go OK and see. OK, it looks like everything's OK now. Must have been just a visual anomaly. So you can see that the depth is OK here. So now um, those holes are done. Now we just need to do the cutoff con contour. So I'm just going to double click here, go to the Geometry tab deselect all the contour on the original edge and we're going to select this edge because we do need to cut off this edge so I select it once or click once click again select um, this open contour and then hit the check mark the depth should be okay we can just confirm we're going negative 0.115 basically not through the entire part um, it's a 1 8 inch or negative 0.125. So we're just leaving a little bit of material, specifically 10 thousandths. And that we can cut off later um, by hand. It will be really easy in the post-processing. So now hit OK. Let's take a look at the um, pattern or the entire tool path here. So let's um, select that and go to simulate. And notice that the pattern shows up before because we copied or made a duplicate of the entire first process. So now I can just hit play on the simulate. I can show the stock if needed. And everything looks OK. I can skip to the next operation. Skip there. And then we get the one cutoff. And then the end cutoff there. Everything looks fine. So now operations 2 and 4 are now complete.